now we will read about the say stores which is a part or which is a classification from the uh, getting uh, origin from the uh, helminths okay so we will read about the say stores mainly but before going to say stores we want to see some other classifications i mean some other uh, you know the whole classification of the helminths in which we have classified uh, the helminth um, group into cestodes trematodes and nematodes this is not the complete classification because before this classification the helminth is classified basically broadly into uh, two uh, parts that is the platy helminthes and the nemat helminthes now the platy helminthes has got these two classifications cestodes and trematodes while the nemat helminths has got this nematodes okay so uh, I have uh, described this whole difference uh, in the classification of helminth also but I will also uh, I mean I will give an overview also here also about this differences between this cestodes, trematodes and the nematodes. So the shape is that in the cestodes it is the shape is dorso ventrally flattened it is tape like okay. in trematodes the shape is leaf like in nematodes it is the nematodes are cylindrical in shape and uh, sexual if we talk about sexuality then the cestodes are monoecious that means they have got both male and the female organs in same in trematodes they have uh, they are monoecious except the schistosomes which are dioecious so in case of trematodes the exception is always the schistosomes okay nematodes are dioecious because the male and female are present in two different uh, uh, organisms if you talk about suckers then in cestodes suckers with hooklets are present and in trematodes suckers without hooks are present in nematodes have the the nematodes have the the nematodes have the uh, buccal capsule not the suckers okay then uh, if you talk about elementary canal the, it is absent in cestodes but it is poorly developed in trematodes and it is well developed in nematodes if you talk about body cavity then it is absent in cestodes it is absent in trematodes but it is present in nematodes that means we can say that nematodes are uh, relatively more developed than the cestodes or trematodes okay now coming to the same uh, cestodes proper so first we will see the different uh, you know um, parts of the their life cycle so cestodes have uh, these these cestodes pass through three stages the first stage is of the adult worm so in adult worm the structure of adult worm is that they have scolex they have a neck they have strobila so scolex in scolex that is also called the head that has got suckers and hooklets on rostellum these are the two most important structures which are present on the scolex or the head of the adult worm and then they have got neck and also there is strobila strobila is nothing but a number of proglottids that means a number of proglottids are attached like this okay these are these are all the proglottids these are attached in this way so this whole structure forms the strobila and then there is neck and then there is this this is the uh, so scolex so this is scolex this is the neck and this is whole part is the strobila this uh, this neck ha uh, i mean this scolex has suckers on its mouth okay these are suckers and along with that there are hooklets also on the rostellum so this is the typical structure of the schematic structure of the adult worm of cestode cest uh, i mean cestode adult worm this is the first stage now coming to the second stage the second stage is the egg egg stage okay so they, they these adult worms are monoecious they lay eggs and in all cestodes uh, the eggs are round and consist of an embryo with six hooklets so um, egg is somewhat like this this is the egg then there are six hooklets two four and six so like this they have got a round a round egg with six hooklets inside but the uh, exception here is about the dive egg of the diphylo diphylobothrium latum okay so in diphylobothrium latum 
the eggs are ovoid and operculated the eggs are like this this suppose this is a egg then this is a operculum there okay this is the operculum there yeah f of the egg and this is the egg so uh, in diphylobotrium egg the eggs are ovoid like this and they have got a operculated egg okay there is operculum on that egg so that is the exception here in the egg of the diphylobotrium latum this is egg stage okay but this important point about the egg should must be remembered of all other cestodes okay then coming to the larva so larva of uh, tinea is cysticercus now that may be cysticercus bovis or cysticercus cellulosi depending on the species of the tinea if it is tinea saginata then it is tinea uh, cysticercus bovis if it is tinea solium then it is cellulosi okay the tinea saginata by the name you can see that tinea saginata is relatively longer name than the tinea solium that means and we also know that uh, the cattles are bigger than the pigs okay cattles are bigger than the pigs so tinea saginata infects cattle while well, the tinea solium infects pigs okay so by cattle you can also remember the name of the larva cattle means bovis okay and if bovis uh, is of tinea saginata then of course cellulose will be of tinea solium okay so by that uh, uh, i mean you know concept you can remember this uh, the host of uh, two different tinea tineas and the also the uh, larvae stages of this both tinea because the most of the confusion in cestodes lies in between this tinea saginata and tinea solium what is the host of these and what is the larva of these both are get both uh, very often get confused okay we very often get confused between these two so that's why uh, if you remember it by this uh, in this way you can remember it for a longer duration so of course in tinea the larva is the cysticercus bovis or cysticercus cellulose depending on the species of the tinea and hymenolepis nana the larval stage is called as cysticercoid in echinococcus granulosus the larval stage is hydrated cyst in diphylobotrium latum the larval stage there are three larval stages the first one is the coracidium then prosarcoid and plerosarcoid you cannot do anything you have to remember these names you have to remember these names and there is only technique to remember them by giving it multiple revisions only by revising this you can remember i have remembered it by revision you can also remember it by revision only okay so these larval names can only be remembered by reading it multiple times now coming to the difference between uh, all these organisms so uh, we will see the difference in between definitive host intermediate host infective form and the diagnostic form so tinea saginata uh, okay so first point you should remember is that the definitive host always is man 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 except the echinococcus granulosus where the definitive host is dog and how will you remember this so see here in echinococcus granulosus you have got a g in dog also you have got a g that means the definitive host in cestodes is dog you can remember this now coming to the intermediate host cattle pig now to which this pig uh, uh, I mean, uh, related and to which cattle uh, is related you will often get confused in this so i have already tell, told you that by the name you can remember this saginata is really longer name than the solium and cattle is relatively bigger than pig so bigger for bigger okay so saginata is if saginata is bigger name then it will go for bigger bigger animal that is cattle solium is a smaller name so it will go for a smaller animal that is pig so by that you can remember and since it is cattle so it will be bovis okay sister circus bovis so by that you can remember the larval name also so intermediate host in saginata and solium has done has been done 
now coming to the echinococcus granulosus so in echinococcus granulosus the intermediate host is men you should remember you have to remember this in hymenolepis nana there is no intermediate host okay in diphylobothrium latum the intermediate host is first intermediate host is cyclops which are found in water bodies and second is the fish in bengali uh, uh, a, a fish is found i mean there is a fish which is called as lote match okay lote match in bengali it is very uh, famous and uh, very formally found in the bengali markets fish markets so by that lote you can remember this latum okay and if it is latum so it the intermediate host will be a fish not uh, lote fish lote match but of course by that you can remember that yes uh, the intermediate host in case of diphylobothrium latum is a fish okay so by that you can remember the definitive and the intermediate host now infective form infective form is very commonly the larva only okay like in case of Cyganeta, it is bovis. In case of Solium, it is cellulose. Sustis circus cellulose. And in case of Diphylobothrium latum, it is Pilirosarcoid larva, which is the third stage larva. Pilirosarcoid larva. Okay. But in two cases, the Echinococcus granulosus and Hymenolopis nana, the, uh, the you know, infective form is embryonated eggs. Okay. And if the larva is the infective form, then the diagnostic form will be the embryonated egg. Larva is if the infective form, then the diagnostic form will be the embryonated egg. Larva is the if lar if egg is the uh, if egg is the infective form, then larva will be the diagnostic form. If larva is the infective form, then egg will be the diagnostic form. And this operculated egg is very characteristic finding, okay, of Diphylobothrium latum but you again the uh, the you know exception to this law is h nana where both the infective form and the diagnostic form both are embryonated egg only okay so for infection also embryonated egg is required and for diagnosis also embryonated egg is required okay so this is the difference between the different cestodes and that is all about the different life uh, i mean different stages in the life cycle of the cestodes Next, we will see different uh, cestodes separately. Okay. Okay.